Back in August, 83,000 customers had their PII or personal identifiable information leaked due to a misconfigured Google Cloud storage bucket by an organization called Alice's Table. What's unique about this organization is the entrepreneur was on Shark Tank back in 2017 and received funding from Mark Cuban himself, but they were breached back in August. Now, when it comes to cloud security, if you study for any length of time, you know how severe it can be if a storage bucket is misconfigured. In AWS, you have S3 buckets, in Azure you have Azure blobs, and in Google Cloud you have Google Cloud storage buckets. Now I've been spending some time at my org where I work digging into GCP, getting my handle for how GCP works, some exploits, some ways to really hack into GCP, and ways to abuse misconfigurations, and one of the things I've been digging into is Google Cloud storage buckets. In this video I want to share with you a tool that Rhino Security Labs released quite a few years ago, I think five years ago now, that I literally stumbled upon using Google. So for those of you don't know I work at Rhino and I'm doing some googling about cloud storage buckets and the first link that I see is all about this tool that I want to showcase to you. What this tool allows you to do is put in a keyword and it will search out through Google storage and find any Google storage buckets that one exists and it will also check for permissions. Like as an anonymous user can I read from the bucket? Can I write to the bucket? Can I list information in the bucket? So without any further ado let's go ahead and dive into it and let me showcase this tool for you. So here we are on my Kali Linux machine. Let's go ahead and open up our browser. So for me, it will be Firefox. And we are gonna head over to the Rhino Security Labs GitHub and check out a tool called GCP Bucket Brute. So here we are, GCP Bucket Brute, and I'll read through this a little bit. This is a script to enumerate Google storage buckets, determine what access you have to them, and determine if they can be privilege escalated. So it accepts GCP user and service account credits in a keyword, but you can also do it anonymously, which is what I'm going to show you, because that's when it's a big deal. Alice's table was exploited because they had a Google Cloud storage bucket that allowed anonymous users to read the data, download the data of over 83,000 customers, and if they had it out, I guarantee there's more organizations affected by this, so I want you to be aware of it. And I do have to give the disclaimer, of course, only use this for ethical means. I do not support any unethical hacking. I am an ethical hacker. I am a pen tester, so use this for pen testing, red teaming, all of that good stuff. Now, if you do use credentials, which you can, just know that your credentials are likely going to show up in the log. So if you're doing a red team engagement and you don't want to be obvious, you probably don't want to use the creds from your organization to check what permissions you might have. But the script is really easy to use. We can see it right here. We can scan for all buckets with the keyword test and dash u means to do it unauthenticated or anonymously. Now our first step is to install this and what we're going to do is set up a Python virtual environment. Let me open up my terminal right here. The reason it's important to do a Python virtual environment is when you're just installing random tools from the internet in Python, they have different dependencies and if it's an older tool, it's likely going to break other tools you have on your system. If we first set up a Python virtual environment, it keeps everything to its own and isolated and you're not going to run into any of those strange issues. So to do that, I will go ahead and zoom in so you can see my screen. Good. We'll zoom in a lot. Here we go. And we're going to type Python 3. We want to do a module and we want to do the virtual environment module like so. And we'll just call it my environment. All right, now that we created it, we want to source it or jump into the virtual environment. So let's do that. Now we'll do source my environment bin activate and you can see based on this we are now in a python virtual environment now i'm going to cd over to my gcp folder and we'll clear and there's nothing in this folder as you can see right now but let's go ahead and grab this script so here on the github page which i'll drop a link to this in the description of this video click code right here and we're going to grab this copy url to clipboard let's jump back over to our terminal and we're going to type in git clone and then paste in that URL like so. Okay, we have that. And now if we LS, we have GCP bucket brute right here. So let's CD or change directory into there. And LS, we have some requirements.txt that we want to install. And because we already set up our Python virtual environment, we don't have to worry about it breaking anything. So let's do pip3 install dash r and then pass it the requirements.txt. This will take just a moment while it installs all of the different dependencies that we need. And if we back out now, we have this tool. Now we can go ahead and run it, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the output better than when I'm zoomed in that much. But we'll do Python 3, 
And now let's just run it with dash H or the help flag. And we can see some more information on here. I'm gonna zoom out even more here. But you can see the usage. This script will generate a list of permutations from permutations.txt using the keyword passing the K or keyword argument. Then it will attempt to enumerate Google storage buckets with those names without any authentication. If a bucket is found to be listable, it will be reported. Buckets that allow access to all users. If a bucket is found but it is not listable, it will use the default gcloud CLI creds to try and list the bucket. If the bucket is listable with creds, it will be reported, blah, 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 blah. So here's the thing. When it came to Alice this table and those 83,000 customers who had the information exposed, you could have found it. You could have been the security researcher who stumbled across that bucket and responsibly disclosed it with a tool like GCP Bucket Brute by looking through some of these buckets that might be misconfigured. Now, the way to run this, we're just going to search for tests because usually the test buckets aren't going to have anything sensitive in it. And I don't want YouTube to give me another strike and <laughs> ban my videos. So I'm going to show you how to do it with a test one. And if we jump back over to GitHub, you can actually see right here, that's the example that we are given. So we do dash K for our keyword, whoops, and then dash U for unauthenticated. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. We'll jump back to our terminal and we will do Python 3 GCP and dash K test and dash U for unauthenticated or anonymous access. We would enter, you can see right away, it begins to enumerate all of these different buckets. So we know, although we can't access them, we now have some bucket enumeration. We know that these buckets exist. So you can imagine if you're doing a red team engagement and let's say you're targeting try hack me, right? We could look for all buckets that have the keyword try hack me and it's gonna apply permutations to it. So it'll be like try hack me uploads, try hack me support, things like that. Looking for information that we are able to find. And here is what we are looking for. If we're doing a red team engagement, you can see it found a bucket it called test eternal and it says unauthenticated listable and unauthenticated readable we have another one called blog test we have another one called test reports we have another one called test cache but let's just check one of these out and i'll show you what you can see once again as a fully anonymous user i'm going to go over to this url it is storage.googleapis.com and then it accepts the bucket name. So storage.googleapis.com and let's go ahead and grab this bucket name of test eternal or internal rather, not eternal. Maybe it is an eternal test, I don't know. And you can see we have some information here. So we actually have a file, markdown tutorial, MD, and we have the generation key, et cetera. Now, if we wanted to see the file, which it all depends if the file itself is configured to allow public access, we would do this, type it in. And you can see it actually did download the file and we can open it up. And here we go. We just downloaded a file from a publicly exposed storage bucket. Now this is just a test bucket. It doesn't have anything interesting here that an attacker can use, but you can imagine if you were able to find sensitive information as you're doing this, this would not be good. Now as a security researcher or a pen tester, it's great because you can report this to the client before a bad guy or bad lady does it to them. But this is a great way to use GCP, to use this tool to look through storage buckets and to very quickly find misconfigurations. So hey, if you have an organization, if you're a business leader, might be something you could try. Like use the keyword of your organization's name and see are there any buckets related to my organization that might be misconfigured or publicly exposed. Once again, I will drop a link to this in the description of this video. And hey guys, I'm doing a lot more GCP learning personally. So I know I have a bunch of videos on AWS. I have quite a few videos on Azure. I think I have one video on GCP. Well, you're going to see a lot more videos on GCP as I dig into this third cloud offering and figure out how I can hack Google Cloud Platform, except, of course, for the greater good as I do pen testing. So, hey, hopefully you learned something from this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.